Hello, hello. Welcome back. I hope you're back. I hope you're a subscriber. If not, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. I'll keep making more analog pocket videos. So this is not about the pocket itself, but about the recent beta for the new firmware. So we're going to go through some of the changes and I'll show you some videos of some new functionality, cool functionality that has been added to the analog pocket. So one of the cool things about the analog pocket is that we have analog itself you know, releasing new updates for the OS, both for the pocket and for the dock. So if you compare it where they were when they released like in late 2021, uh, which was quite verbal. You could just play games uh, and I think that was it. So now where you have uh, features to do save states, you can do screenshots. Uh, I'll tell you what we added recently, one cool, really cool feature that I added recently. And you can do the course, there's a big community, that's the second part of the equation, the big community developing emulation course that work with the FPGA architecture on the analog pocket. So it's always exciting to see what these two groups are working on. So today we're just going to have a look at what's in the new firmware, up with, up, firmware update. Uh, I cannot pronounce anything today. What's in the new firmware update from analog? So let's have a look at what's in here they usually publish this under the support section. Uh, so they made a few fixes and it looks like they have improved performance on uh, yeah, SPGA and some miscellaneous fixes. But there are two really interesting things. The first one is that they had added a library feature. So this means that uh, when you play a game on your hardware, I will start tracking the time you play on this game. So this is like modern consoles, like they, they, they will do like a summary of what you played at the end of the year. So the analog focus is now tracking which cartridges you play on the game. It's not doing it for the emulation course yet. I don't think they will add that, but they are going to start tracking which games you're playing, how long do you play them, and they will show in a, in a, in a little grid. And I will show you that in a second. The other thing is the service menu uh, option that they added to settings. So we are going to have a look at that as well. So yeah, without further ado, I think those are the highlights for the update. So let's have a look what do they look like on the hardware itself. So here we are, we are going to have a look at the new features on the latest beta and I'm going to do a quick uh, tour of the screenshots which have been improved as well. So let's start with what we have here under tools you go to this new feature called user service you have a few things here uh, the first one so let's go through each one of them the first one looks like it is a way to uh, review their uh, library so they have a library that is used to find cartridge information when you put a cartridge on so when you put a cartridge it will tell you hey you're playing tetris from this year and this is the developer so you can now browse to it. So you can go and see all the different games they have actually uh, in the library, for example, that. And what I've done recently, there's uh, someone on the internet, uh, I'm going to put a link on the video as well, has added a whole bunch of custom images for all the different games. Let me see if I find something like, yeah, let's see, look at that, yeah. So you can see, they have added images for all the different games that are supported by the analog pocket, which is pretty cool. Even have, yeah, even Game Gear. Uh, Master System, do we have Master System? Yeah, all of them, that's great. So you can now browse by system, by developer, by publisher, and by year. Uh, so all the way from 1985 to 2018 which is excellent. This is, this, I, lo I love this feature out of curiosity to see which games are supported by the, <clears throat> by which games are supported by uh, analog. 
Next one, I'm not hundred percent sure about this task. You know, the, this is beta, so the official documentation hasn't been updated. I'm assuming it's used for that identification of the games in the library. Uh, this probably will help them to identify any missing ones. So if I use uh, some user says, hey, I have this card not showing up in my library, they can probably get the signature and look at there. Now, this one is interesting. Let's look at wipe cages. Uh, I try this. So when you select certain options from the menu, sometimes it can take one to two seconds to load uh, the first time. And then I don't know what it does, but it's obviously using a cache uh, <laughs> and then it speeds up the performance uh, pretty significant, significantly. So if for whatever reason you want to uh, erase the cache and then start from scratch, you can do that with this option. The next one uh, is slip state to SD. So this what allows you to do is to save this, the, you know, the post state of a game from the, uh, from the hardware to the SD. Uh, again, potentially, I'm assuming to move it to another another analog pocket. Um, I mean, this is a pretty niche option, but I guess you no, know, it's interesting. And the last one is more for uh, support, I guess. You know, gives information about the last crash that the analog pocket had. Now let's look at library, which is the main big feature of this beta. So what it's doing here is that every time you play a game starting now so if you play all the games that you play so far on the analog pocket that's that was not being tracked there's nothing being tracked before but if you start playing them from now onwards it will create a record here and if you did that um, if you imported images for each one of the games it will show you a little you know, image list of everything you have played uh, when it was added and how many how much time you played so what i've done is I just added the games I've been trying on my analog pocket, some Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, and they're all showing here pretty well. Now, what I also found is that if you didn't have images on the games, and then you add the images later, you will have to play them again for the images to actually be recognized by the analog OS. So that's another thing that you have to keep in mind. The other thing that this gives you the opportunity, you can filter by title, and if you do this you can see it's like a list with all the images and you can also see it like a grid so these are all the games that i've been trying recently and um, yeah, it just creates a nice way to track what kind of games uh, you're playing which ones you played the longest when did you start playing them and all things like that now the last thing i want to show you today is uh, there's an update to memories so uh, screenshots now have better performance. So I've been saving some screenshots from different games. Uh, so if you go, yeah, like that, you can see different games I've been trying. Now, what's interesting about this is that obviously Game Boy, uh, this Game Boy games, Super Game Boy. Actually, this is from a Corey Will. So, so what I'm trying to say is that from the cartridges, you will you can do this from both cartridges, like this one from a cartridge this is from a core this is from a cartridge this is from a core so both games physical games and the roms from the course both work and you can create images uh, you can create screenshots from them it's really cool uh, no i think it's a feature that exists in current modern consoles and this didn't exist when you know, the game boy was around and that's all we have for today so we had a look at what Analog is doing with the latest firmware update. It's promising. It's pro promising. I'm looking forward to all the other changes that Analog has planned for the future. And you know, the community, the community keeps uh, adding cords and tinkering with the FPGA. So it's really exciting to be part of the uh, Analog Pocket community. Um, yeah, and we also look at library, so it's, it's interesting to be able to see your library in a visual way. And these new features on the user services settings uh, section of the OS. Now, 
leave me a comment what do you think of the video what are you doing what are you looking forward in the future on OS? which course are you playing with or what do you want to know leave me a comment i would like to know so i'll make another video in the future and that's all we have for today like i always say subscribe to this channel like this video and keep on collecting